My name is Lara Swiger and I'm from Wales in the UK. My background is that I graduated from Newcastle University last year um, with a first class master's degree in civil and structural engineering and I now work at WSP as a graduate bridge designer. My hobbies are everything to do with the outdoors. I love traveling, I love mountain biking, stand up paddle boarding, road biking, hiking and anything to do with the outdoors. Fun fact about me is that I actually chose my university city based on the amount of bridges there were. My design project was with a charity called Adaptive and for Summits Education in Haiti. And it was basically developing a prototype design framework for 40 remote and accessible schools in Haiti. What I learned, it's hard to summarise in words what I've learned because it's a substantial lot. Um, I've learned so much about structural, architectural, wash and electrical systems that I could put into this prototype design. Um, I've learned how important engagement with the community is throughout this whole process. And I've learned also how Revit and Insight can be used to analyse the performance of buildings. What I remember about this experience in five years time is the impact that these projects have. So just here are photos of the different just one school has made and it's just substantial. I will also remember forever how amazing Adaptive have been to work with and also how much Engineering for Change has taught me about Engineering for Global Development. How has this impacted my career? Well, it's been an irreplaceable experience in Engineering for Global Development and it's made me realise the career path that I want to take. It's also allowed me to develop my skills and learn how I can truly make the biggest impact in this sector. My name is Abdul Rashid Musa. I am originally from Ghana, West Africa, but I'm currently based in Columbia, Missouri, in the United States of America. My background is in civil engineering, uh, specifically transportation engineering, uh, which I'm currently earning my PhD in. Uh, my hobbies include being active, I enjoy spending time outdoors, I want many chance to be creative, so I love to do things that are engaging. Um, a fun fact about me, I love to bake. I really got into it uh, during lockdown and it has become something of a weekly ritual for me now. Uh, so my design project that I worked on for this fellowship was with a partner organisation known as Bridges to Prosperity, who I invested in solving the last mile problem. So my project specifically dealt with access and the impact of trail bridges in rural East Africa. And what I did was develop a process flow for data gathering and processing, utilizing satellite imagery of the before and after situation with respect to the presence of the trail bridges. What I learned from this activity or experience was um, it's quite difficult getting data, especially when you're dealing with the global mm -hmm. south. So it was really important to find creative solutions to meet the end. Um, what I will remember of this experience in the next five years, uh, the wealth of information and engagement from all the learning modules, uh, the connections with the partners and the other E4C fellows and the awareness of the EGD activities that are geared towards the SDGs. How this has impacted my career, so I, used, I was vaguely familiar with engineering for global development, but this has given me uh, first-hand invaluable experience working on an EGD project that has a direct impact improving the lives of real people so i'm really thankful for that Hi, I'm Francisco Plaza. I'm currently based in Quito, Ecuador, and I'll be sharing a little bit about my experience as a 2021 E4C fellow. So a little bit on my background, I studied mechanical engineering in University of San Francisco de Quito, and I did a year abroad at Purdue University. Um, some of my hobbies is adventure and nature photography, and I'm a passionate rock climber. So a fun fact about myself, when I arrived back from Purdue, I started a multidisciplinary community of students in Ecuador to design more. Um, so my design project into the fellowship was to collaborate with AMS Innovation, a Californian startup focused on solar energy, into developing a solar fridge that was the would be able to remain cold 24/7, only relying on solar energy. Uh, the problem we were uh, achieving is that we were freezing completely the storage goods. So I arrived into the project to provide some thermal expertise, and the way I did that is basically. And developing some thermal models to understand how the different parameters would affect the performance of the fridge and then move that to a more detailed CAD design and validate that through CFD and finite element analysis 
and every week we have a steering meeting when we sync up uh, my results with their physical testings and we move the project to that one direction or another. At the end, we were able to produce and to design a local solar fridge that we are super excited to see in the market. So what I learned from the fellowship, I interacted a lot with Chinese designs and Chinese vendors. So I actually totally learned Chinese. I good uh, know how a good I grasp good, some good know how on design and design for manufacturing, and grasp some solar energy bases, which I'm super excited about. If you ask me five years from now what I will remember about the fellowship, I'll tell you I remember my small group. My small group was this group of five six fellows that we interacted every single week into designing uh, and discussing our design problems. And uh, sharing experience and expertise, and uh, they just inspire to become a better engineer and a better person overall. And I will remember the impact we made. So at the beginning, we had this fridge that will deliver frozen beers to the end users in West Africa. Uh, and the end, we developed this low cost fridge that will deliver the perfect beer to the end users in West Africa. I'm super excited about that. Hello, my name is Sienna Shea and I'm based in Los Angeles, California in the United States. I have a background in mechanical engineering and sustainability science from Stanford University, and for the past two summers I've worked with E4C and Autodesk to work on impactful sustainability-related projects. I come from a family of classical musicians, and I hope to combine my unique background in both art and technology to work as a PM in the future. My hobbies include watching films, making music with my family, cooking with my grandparents, and volunteering for tutoring programs in my local community. A fun fact about me is I actually befriended a groundhog outside of my dorm in my junior year of college. This summer, my design project was to work with the Autodesk Foundation to analyze their portfolio organization techniques, get feedback, and provide those recommendations back to the Autodesk team, hoping that all of this would lead to greater adoption of emerging technology across the portfolio companies. In addition, I also helped scope out software donations, schedule technology assessments, and organize trainings with the portfolio organizations. What I learned from this experience was cross-collaboration, operational tools, conducting customer success research, and knowledge of the industry and the landscape of what the portfolio organizations are working on and the status of their technology development stories. What I will remember and take away from this experience in five years is the amount of in-kind support programs that Autodesk offers. I was so fascinated with the culture of cross-collaboration and communication across the team, and I was also really impressed with how employees continue to engage in volunteer activities and pro bono consulting after hours. Now, how this has impacted my career is that this experience has provided me vision, focus, and skill development. By interacting with a diverse and talented cohort of portfolio organizations and getting the opportunity to interview and interact with them has really inspired me to continue to pursue my career in EGD and has also given me the confidence and skills to continue to apply my skills to work in the industry. And so I really appreciated and enjoyed this experience and I hope to continue to stay in touch with the community. My name is Sam Butterworth. I have a background in civil engineering, which is over three years of experience working in rural water supply based in Uganda. And I'm about to commence an MSc in water and sanitation for development. I'm from the UK and I'm based just outside of the city of Leicester in the centre of England. And as part of the fellowship this year, I took part in a project with Medicine Sans Frontiers with a project title, A Standard Adaptable Catalogue of Water Tower Designs and Construction Typologies. Medicine Sans Frontiers, or MSF, provides large scale humanitarian assistance people suffering as a consequence of conflict, epidemics, natural disasters, and exclusion from healthcare services. The large population demand that's typically found in these scenarios requires a method of safely supplying, storing, and distributing water over substantial areas. This makes elevated water storage tanks a vital piece of water supply infrastructure in both urban and rural settings. Therefore, the aim of this project was to produce a catalogue of structurally sound, standardised water storage options able to meet local demand whilst accounting for site variability. At the beginning of the project, three tank capacities of 5, 10 and 20 metres cubed at heights of 3, 6 and 9 metres were put forward by MSF. And to account for the variability in construction site conditions, a risk design matrix was developed. 
It investigated primary loading conditions with which our tower designs may be subjected to and established four risk categories based on these loading conditions. This results in a total of 36 separate designs to be taken forward into modelling. So far, nine of these designs have been produced, which satisfies MSF's basic input constraints and also forms the basis or foundation for this catalogue. These nine designs were produced using Revit, Autodesk software, and they were tested and simulated using robot structure analysis to ensure that each member was uh, structurally optimised. Technical drawings and bills of quality were produced for each of the nine uh, from models, and these were then exported to either PDF or Excel. However, the selection of an appropriate model from the catalogue to meet site constraints requires technical expertise on the ground that MSF field staff may lack. It was then discovered that Inventor iLogic enables rule-driven design to standardise and automate the design process and configure structural models to suit user input constraints. This meant that columns, beams and cross bracings could be placed or modified to better support changing load conditions using simple drop-down menus that are pre-programmed. So you can see here this tank capacity changing the sizes and quantity of the supporting columns supporting the uh, water platform above. So we have uh, 5 meters cubed, 10 meters cubed, and, 10, and 20 meters cubed, and you can see the changing sizes respective of these capacities. So the, uh, the use of Inventor and its iLogic capabilities represents a lot of potential as it can automate the selection process by reducing user input, thereby making our design catalog smart. However, whilst iLogic has great potential for this application, it is still in the early stages of development for this project, and the, and the finished computer-based catalog will require the software. This may not be technically or logistically feasible for MSF ground staff when resources are limited and construction sites are remote. Autodesk Forge, however, is a cloud-based platform that can integrate Inventor iLogic with a simple internet browser, significantly increasing the compatibility with fieldwork. This will form the basis for future work on this project. During the fellowship, I developed competency with uh, Autodesk Revit, Inventor, and Robot Structure Analysis software. I significantly improved my presentation and communication skills, and I increased my network of practitioners in the engineering for global development space. My name is Brandon Simons. Right now, I live right outside of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania in the United States. Mm -hmm. I am studying for my master's in system engineering and international development at Villanova University. I'm also half American and Korean. So my background is from the Illinois Institute of Technology, where I studied electrical engineering. After my degree, I decided to join the Peace Corps for a couple of years, where I served in Zambia, focusing mostly in fish farming. But I did a lot of other work with youth, especially focused around HIV and AIDS education. So for my hobbies, like a lot of my fellows, I like to go hiking and have a lot of outdoor activities, whether it's from mountaineering to backpacking to rock climbing, uh, just a wide variety of outdoor sports. So one of my passions uh, and things I like to do is to build electronic longboards. I started this out in college and I continue to the day as my means of transportation around the cities that I live in. My design project for E4C was with Solar Buddy, an Australian NGO. We were really focused on developing a new product line for them called Family Buddy. And so this solution that you can see here focuses on giving families across the world the ability to cook cleanly without fossil resources. So this has this box has around 600 to 700 watts of solar with a lithium iron phosphate battery backup that can provide a full day's power for a family of five to cook their meals, uh, as well as having outputs for uh, a solar fridge, as well as possible lights too. So the whole project was look at the feasibility of this and design it from the grounds up. So that was one of my big learning lessons from this fellowship was product development. And within that, it was a lot of engaging of stakeholders and with Solar Buddy as well as her partners abroad. And so taking in consideration all of these perspectives from one, maybe NGOs in the field that are trying to do similar things to uh, Solar Buddy's partners in Madagascar, I go, what are the food requirements for the stove? What are the cooking requirements? As well as the technical specifications that were required by, by Solar Buddy. So having 
this feedback loop within the stakeholders was so essential to the project that eventually led to the development of the CAD modelings on Fusion 360. So the thing that I think I'll remember the most out of these five years is the relationships that I've made. Whether it's with Simon and Joe from Solar Buddy that helped with the design and, and feasibility of this whole project, but also of the small group called here at E4C of really creating these relationships to hear the diverse perspectives that we have from engineering to life and having this diverse group and communicating really brought out, you know, the ideas and the enthusiasm that we have in engineering for global development. I think this is what I remember the most and the relationships that will last me throughout my entire life. And so for my career, I already see that all the work that I've had within this project has started to move out to my other projects that I have. This is one in Cambodia, or other ones I have in Fiji. It really is all these design principles of product development to the engagement of stakeholders and understanding why and how we design and the implications of the design choices that we make and really communicating those across stakeholders and hearing their perspectives and their understandings because without that, we don't have the true impact that we want to have. And so throughout this whole project, working with Solar Bunny E4C, I really understood as what my role is as an engineer and how do I collaborate with others from a diverse background and field to make everything that I want to do a reality. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Martin Del Pino. I'm from Argentina, currently living in Spain and Sweden because of my studies. I'm an industrial engineer from the University of Buenos Aires with a specialization in project management for sustainable development and fina uh, finalizing my studies in sustainability in UPC of Barcelona and KTH of Stockholm. My hobbies, of course, being an Argentinian, I like a lot football, I also enjoy literature, writing, reading, and traveling a lot, and doing out outdoor exercises. Um, maybe a, a fun fact about me, it, it was my, my experience in Mozambique, working with rural communities uh, in the construction of schools. It was a life-changing experience some, some years ago. And regarding my project collaboration, I work with the partner Habitat for Humanity, um, analyzing the opportunities of the circular economy in the affordable housing sector in Mexico. So the objective was to map opportunities, trends, barriers, and policy options to enable circularity in affordable housing. So our main outcomes were four uh, opportunities to to achieve this, well, the first one was the recycling of construction and demolition waste, then the use of bio-based and natural materials, um, also boosting the use of industrialized construction systems to reduce the, the use of materials, and finally a big trend is the use of plastics as a recycling material for, for buildings. Um, the project was really, really interesting and maybe the, the thing I will remember in four or five years was the multicultural experience working with fellows from 22 countries and the partner for, from different countries. It was a very interesting work of my empathy and communication skills and how this impact my career. I think I learned a lot about a strategic approach for sustainable de development goals and how there are synergies between uh, different SDGs and of course working remotely was a, a great challenge and of course uh, connecting with high impact global organizations as Habitat for Humanity and E4C. Thank you everyone, nice to meet you. Hi. My name is Sahar Shamsi, and I'm based in Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. My background is in mechanical engineering, and I received my degree from the University of Toronto. A fun fact about me is that I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, and I enjoyed learning and teaching martial arts in my spare time. During the fellowship, my project was with the United States Department of Energy, specifically their division of ENRA, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. 
Enroll hosts a $3.3 million multi-stage competition known as the Waves to Water Prize, asking innovators to create wave-powered desalination systems for disaster relief scenarios. This advances sustainable development goals number six and number seven. During this project, I was able to support 10 entrepreneurs in the fourth stage of the competition, the Create stage, to help solidify their technical design for the next stage of the competition, as well as look at into their business plan and help to effectively bring the product to market. My wow moment during this fellowship was when I first realized the incredible potential of wave energy systems. At that moment, I knew that I was working on technologies that would build a sustainable future for us all. During the fellowship, I learned so, so much. I first gained a global network of fellows and collaborating and consulting with them taught me to look at a problem with multidimensional perspectives. Alongside that, I also learned that I loved working with entrepreneurs. The fellowship gave me so many opportunities to explore that, first with my project with NREL and also through ASME's iShow, a hardware-led social innovation accelerator. I was able to facilitate a hardware validation session, which taught me that I absolutely loved interacting with entrepreneurs. Coupled with my love for working towards the sustainable development goals, I learned that I wanted to continue my career in this path. That led me to join Climate Ventures at the Centre for Social Innovation in Toronto, where I lead a program of six accelerators for hundreds of entrepreneurs all across the 13 provinces and territories of Canada. So with that, I'd like to say a big thank you to E4C and ASME for this amazing fellowship.